Welcome to Bewley, one of the loveliest villages in the Scottish Highlands, located just a stone's throw away from the city of Inverness. Situated on the outskirts of the capital of the Highlands, Bewley is only a small village, home to little more than a thousand people, but it's also home to more than its fair share of history. Over the course of 800 years, the early medieval village of Bewley has grown up through the centuries into an affluent suburb of Inverness, with an eclectic collection of shops, hotels and more, alongside a number of fascinating historical landmarks. On this walk around Bewley, we'll explore everything from a ruined medieval monastery to one of Europe's oldest trees. But we start on Bewley Square, where we're looking at the village's historic market cross, believed to have been built sometime around the year 1430. That makes Bewley's Cross, otherwise known as a Mercat Cross, one of the oldest still standing in Scotland, and it stands just beside a fountain that serves as a memorial dedicated to soldiers who were stationed here during the Second World War, not only British troops, but those of other Allied armies as well. The fountain is the smaller of the two war memorials on Bewley Square, and we'll take a closer look at the village's imposing Lovett Scouts Boer War Memorial in a little while. But just beside Bewley Square here, there stands a historic marvel of nature. The gnarled tree behind these gates is believed to be the oldest elm tree in all of Europe, at nearly 800 years old. We know that this tree has stood here for that long because it appears in records from the early 13th century, when monks established a priory here in Bewley. Now sadly, centuries after it was first planted, Bewley's iconic elm tree has become infected with Dutch elm disease, and as we see it now, the tree is 95% dead, meaning it doesn't have long left. But over eight centuries of life, the elm tree has seen the rise of one of Scotland's loveliest villages, now overlooking a bustling market square and high street on one side, and the gardens of a centuries-old monastery on the other. The modern village of Bewley owes its origins to the now ruined landmark that we can see up ahead, Bewley Priory, which was founded nearly 800 years ago in the 1230s. Once upon a time, Bewley Priory was an expansive complex that symbolised its status as one of the wealthiest monasteries in Scotland. Although all that remains today is this, the ruined Priory Church, which we can venture inside. Now the Priory Church was built on a rather large scale for its time and location, a symptom of the wealth that its monks accumulated over time, although this was actually rather controversial, as Bewley Priory was originally founded by monks who had sworn to a vow of poverty, chastity and obedience. The monks swore to this as they were part of the reclusive Valiscorlian Order, who arrived here from East Central France, near the modern city of Dijon. And it's thought that, as French-speaking monks, the men who founded Bewley Priory also helped to establish the modern village's name, Bewley deriving from the French Beaulieu, meaning beautiful place. That's just one theory as to the origins of Bewley's name, however, but there's another, more famous one that comes a little later on in history, which we'll talk about once we've explored the Priory in more detail. Here, for example, we find ourselves in the middle of the church, across which there was historically a large screen that separated the central nave and the choir area, the latter being the place where monks would sit and sing, and also the place where a number of important burials were carried out. As we walk into the choir at this end of the church, you'll find a number of medieval tombs built into the walls and floor of the church, many belonging to members of historic local clans, most notably the Mackenzie clan. Here on the ground, we can see the tomb of Alexander Mackenzie, who died in 1479, and was one of the first of the clan to be buried inside Bewley Priory. Along with the tombs themselves, there was also once an effigy of Alexander Mackenzie in the walls just in front of us here, while on the opposite side of the church, there remains an effigy of another Mackenzie, Kenneth, who died in 1491. But Clan Mackenzie isn't the only clan with a long history of links to Bewley, with the Priory here also serving as the site of the graves of many members of the powerful Clan Fraser of Lovett, who are famously associated with the city of Inverness and the surrounding region, and can trace their heritage in this area all the way back to the 13th century. 
We know that Clan Fraser of Lovett has been highly influential in this part of Scotland for centuries now, with the surname Fraser still the most common in Inverness, many people being descendants of those who supported the clan centuries ago. In the grey tombs by our feet here, you'll find some of the oldest burials of Clan Fraser of Lovett members, most of which date from around the 16th century, when Bewley Priory here was no longer a Valiscorlian monastery as it was when it was first established. By that point, the Valiscorlian order had been suppressed by the Pope, and Bewley Priory was converted into a rather more common Cistercian monastery, which continued to operate in its large complex, the Old North Chapel having once existed behind the closed doors in front of us here, and opposite it, the Old South Chapel. The remains of the South Chapel are just one part of the now ruined exterior of the once great Bewley Priory. But how did the Priory's decline come about? Well, as we mentioned, Bewley Priory became a Cistercian monastery around the early 16th century, likely in the 1510s, at the outset of a century full of religious strife in Scotland. While parts of this priory were rebuilt around that time in a look towards the future, just a few decades later, there came the highly significant Scottish Reformation, when the country split from the Catholic Church and established its own Protestant Kirk. The Reformation proved a death knell for places like Bewley Priory, as in the aftermath of the Kirk's establishment, Catholic priories just like this were shut down and either destroyed or converted for a different use. In the short term, Bewley Priory was converted into a local graveyard, and the headstones that remain in the grass in front of the church today were placed here during that period. As for why the Priory looks so dilapidated today, however, that came as a result of the actions of the troops of Oliver Cromwell, who in 1653 stripped the Priory of most of its stone to build a huge citadel fort in Inverness, leaving only the remains of the roofless church building here. Ever since, Bewley Priory has become a popular visitor attraction, its ruins being the main draw for tourists to Bewley, although the Priory was also featured in one of the Outlander novels, set among the wild highlands and which were adapted into a hit TV show. So if you're a fan of Outlander, Bewley Priory is a great place to visit, where you can also get a glimpse of the long history of this beautiful village. However, we're now going to make our way away from the Priory and back out into the village itself, which as we mentioned, is theorised to have gained its name on account of the French monks who arrived here around 800 years ago. The beautiful place, or Beaulieu, that the monks are thought to have been referring to, was the nearby River Bewley, although it appears that the French-inspired name didn't exactly catch on at first. Instead, for the first few centuries after the Priory was established, Bewley was typically known by the Gallic name Avanachain, meaning place of the monks. In fact, it wasn't until the 16th century that the name of this place moved from the Gallic Avanachain to the French-inspired Bewley, possibly thanks to Mary, Queen of Scots. The story goes that when Mary, a native French speaker, was either visiting or simply passing by this village, she proclaimed, C'est un beau lieu. Her keenness for Bewley may have influenced others to refer to the village by this name, although it's more likely that Mary simply confirmed the name that had already been coined by the old monks at the Priory. But as we make our way past Bewley's medieval market cross once again, this of course isn't the only Beaulieu that you'll find in the UK, as about 600 miles to the south of here, there's a village that's also named Bewley, in Hampshire on England's south coast. England's Bewley, famous for its motor museum today, was similarly named by French-speaking monks, who are still commemorated in the heart of Scotland's Bewley, with the Jolly Friar sculpture here, hidden among the leaves just beside the most prominent monument on Bewley Square. This is the Lovett Scouts Boer War Memorial, unveiled here at the heart of Bewley back in 1905. As the name suggests, the memorial is dedicated to the Lovett Scouts, a troop of former gamekeepers from around the Highlands who joined together in 1900 and fought in South Africa during the Second Boer War. The Lovett Scouts were among the most skilled regiments in the entire British Army, and they later went on to become the Army's very first sniper unit, before serving in both world wars, 
and now still existing as a part of the British Army's 51st Highland Volunteers. Now as I'm sure you've noticed, the Scouts bear the name Lovett, in recognition of the historic clan of this region, and which has also lent its name to a number of other landmarks around Bewley. Walking along the High Street now, we'll take a walk towards the Lovett Arms Hotel, before a brief stroll on the back streets of this small but still rather active village. Most of the action in central Bewley is focused here on the square, surrounding which there are a number of mostly residential streets, although there are a number of interesting sites a little further afield from where we are now. For instance, about half a mile down this road, you'll find Bewley's station, which is famous among railway enthusiasts owing to the fact that it, as you can see from this image, has the shortest platform on Britain's railways, at just over 49 feet or 15 metres in length. However, Bewley's pint-sized station isn't the only landmark in the village to have caught attention across the nation, as we can see from one of the shops that stands along the high street. Situated in a historic building known as the Highland Tweed House, this is the home of Campbell's of Bewley, a tailor's that dates all the way back to 1858. A famously exquisite outlet in this wonderful village, Campbell's of Bewley has seen its reputation grow over the years, and since 1965, it has been awarded numerous royal warrants as official tailors to the British royal family. Providing elegant and austere garments to royals of many different generations, Campbell's of Bewley has since 2017 most notably been an official tailor of Queen Elizabeth II, who actually visited Bewley back in 1981. Now that visit was only a fleeting stop as part of a much anticipated tour of the Highlands, and so the Queen didn't stop overnight here in Bewley, but if she had done, then perhaps the Love at Arms Hotel would have been a lovely choice. By far the largest hotel in the village centre, the Love at Arms was built back in 1871, and it's today owned and run by the Fraser family, the most famous family in this part of the Highlands. But who exactly are Clan Fraser of Lovett, and how did they become the dominant presence in the area around Inverness? Well, as we take a closer look at the Lovett Arms, the clan has been present in the historic county of Invernessshire since at least the 13th century. Though like many of the most powerful families in medieval Britain, they're thought to have origins in France, having arrived here in the aftermath of Norman domination of much of Great Britain. Over time, Clan Fraser of Lovett became regularly involved in major conflicts that defined Scotland's history, fighting alongside William Wallace against the English during the First War of Scottish Independence in the early 14th century, and later defending Mary Queen of Scots during the infamous Siege of Inverness in 1562. As a result of their alliance with many victorious parties throughout Scottish history, Clan Fraser of Lovett gained great wealth and influence, and based themselves at a castle near Bewley here. About three miles down the road from the centre of this village, you'll find Castle Beaufort, the historic seat of the chiefs of Clan Fraser. Castle Beaufort, a beautiful manor house of the 1870s, was the modern residence of the clan's chiefs, replacing the much, much older Castle Dooney that had existed on the same site just outside Bewley since at least the 13th century. Castle Beaufort still exists to this day, although it's no longer in the hands of Clan Fraser, sold into private hands in 1994, with the clan's chiefs, also known as the Lord's Lovett, now residing elsewhere. Still, Bewley is the clan's historic home, and as we've seen from around the village, they still command a strong presence in the village today. Here, meanwhile, we're passing by another building that commands a strong presence on Bewley's High Street, the village's former branch of the Bank of Scotland, one of the grandest and most exquisite pieces of architecture in Bewley today. However, back in the days of the Priory, very little in the way of grand architecture existed in this part of Bewley as the village was home to a very rudimentary civilian settlement on the outskirts of the wealthy monastery. But medieval Bewley was still a place of surprisingly bustling activity, and although it was by no means a major regional powerhouse, the village counted on fortunate local geography to help it develop through time, principally on account of its location on a wide meandering section of the River Bewley, which gives an easy link to the Bewley Firth 
and the North Sea. Here though, the river was mostly beneficial as it helped to create vast areas of fertile land that were used for agriculture, in particular corn production, which became an important part of life for all those who lived in Bewley. Here on the side of the residential Croyard Road, meanwhile, we can see the local Free Church of Scotland. As you'd expect, religion has always held an important status in the village on account of its significant priory, although in the aftermath of the priory's closure in the 16th century, Bewley began to experience a period of gradual change that saw its historic association with agriculture complemented by new industries like mining, logging, fishing and more all of which helped to bring wealth to the village despite the loss of its wealthy monastery. The fruits of development in Bewley can be seen on clear display today, with grand buildings like the old bank on the high street and a number of grand houses on surrounding streets, such as this one, which was built back in 1924. That was around the time when Bewley's population was reaching around 1,000 people having grown from a small rural village into a busier settlement alongside the expansion of the big city of Inverness. This growth prompted the building of a variety of new facilities for the village, including new churches like the Catholic and Church of Scotland chapels located here just a short walk from the high street. Both chapels were built in the 19th century, as Bewley shifted from its historic role as a rural agricultural village into a popular commuter town a role that it retains to this day. A key part of this development was of course the building of the railway past Bewley, with the station on the line to Inverness opened in 1860, although that wasn't quite the same pint-sized station that we know today. The original Bewley station, though located on the same site, was closed down in 1960 after nearly a hundred years of service to the local area in part due to the growth of motor bus services that allowed people to travel from here to Inverness. However, in 2002, the station, with its miniature platform, reopened to grand acclaim, and it has already proved a major success, with 75% of Bewley commuters to Inverness having switched from driving to using the train to get to work in the last 20 years. In fact, despite the fact that its platform is so small, Around 50,000 people used the station every year, which makes Bewley Station one of the most used stations per head in the UK. Of course, the station isn't only used by commuters going to work, but also visitors coming to Bewley, the village especially popular among day trippers from Inverness and the surrounding region. If you're in the area, I'd thoroughly recommend a visit to Bewley not only notable for its priory ruins, but also for its pleasant back streets and gorgeous riverside scenery just on the edge of the village centre, as well as the many shops and cafes that line the high street. Bewley may only be a small place, but it's a village that certainly packs a big punch, and I'm sure you'll agree that Mary Queen of Scots was absolutely right when she proclaimed that this place was a beau lieu. Full of history and charm, there's so much to love about Bewley but sadly we've now reached the end of our walk around this wonderful village. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you're now looking forward to visiting Bewley for yourself sometime soon.